Okay, so hello and welcome back. So in this video, we want to do basically just a review of some concepts that you need to know in order to uh, in order for us to be able to start this course. So this, this course basically um, does need basically the con some concepts like, for example. Um, the Cartesian products of sets, the Cartesian products of products of some sets, and hopefully you are already familiar with the with the concept of sets. So, of course, it's not possible to do a review of everything, but basically the the. But, but basically the review that we are doing here is necessary. Moreover, um, we have, um, we have basically some concepts like, we have some, we have another concept called relations. We have another concept called relations. We have another concept called um, functions. And that's basically all that we need to, and we, we also talk about some specific types of functions and That's basically almost everything that we will cover here. So we have basically three concepts in this review. We have the Cartesian product of, 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 of basically of sets. Uh, then on top of that, we build another concept called relations. And then on top of that, we, we, we build another concept called functions. Once we are here, then we will delve, we, we, we will basically dive into um, dive into the, basically the, the, the material of the, the main material of this course, which is basically again, the same, the same, the same type of material, but we will go into them more in depth. Now, in order to understand basically why these concepts are important. So the, the idea of a relation is basically, um, so in normal life, basically we come across some sort of relations. For example, uh, there is, there is basically the relations that we come across, the relations that we come across in, in normal life would be, for example, the relation of brother and sister. There is the relation of father and son, for example. and so on and so forth. Now in mathematics, we have also other types of relations and I'm, I'm not using the word relationship, I'm using the word relation because, because the word relationship could, could probably or possibly refer to a wider range of phenomena but the word relation, the way that we will define it shortly, will uh, refer to a specific type of, well, relation between the members of two sets. Now, for example, in mathematics, we come across relations such as, so the relations that we have uh, in mathematics, In mathematics, we come across these relations such as, for example, um, the number, for example, some number, some number m is less than, is less than, less than the number m, the number, for example, n, for example. Or you can say that um, line l is parallel to line uh, m, for example. 
line L is parallel to line to line M for example or you could say that uh, set A for example set A is a subset of the set of the set B and so on and so forth so there is a relation between between number M and the number N here there is a relation between the line L and the line M here there is a relation between set A and set B here and so on and so forth now um, basically uh, what we will do in this chapter or in this at least in this review is that what we will do in this review is that we will learn how to link pairs of objects from two sets we will learn we will learn how to pair how to pair objects or how to link pairs of objects basically it's better to say how to links how to basically link pairs of objects how to link pairs of objects um, from two sets from two sets and then introduce relations between the two objects and then introduce relations between the between the two objects between the two objects in the pair and then finally we will learn about special relation, re, relations which will qualify as qualify to be functions so we will also learn also learn about special kind of special kind of relations which will qualify which will qualify as as functions so of course I know that I'm sure that this is not new to you because you have most probably taken the the previous course that comes in this in this roadmap but in case you haven't done so I don't think that there is anything for you to worry about really because we will we will go over all of these concepts and we will understand all of these concepts together now the the first thing that we need to talk about is the cartesian product of sets the cartesian the cartesian product of of sets <coughs> So basically, um, suppose that for example A is a set of two colors and B is a set of three objects. B is a set of three objects. So for example, you could say that as an example a is equal to red and blue and for example b is basically a set object b object c and object s okay where b c and s represent a particular bag coat and shirt bag coat and shirt so we have a bag a coat and a shirt b c and s right so 
Now what we want to know is that how many pairs of colored objects can be made from these two sets. The question is how many how many pairs of pairs of colored objects objects can be made can be made from from uh, these two sets so you could have so if you if you take a, like if if you take a look at these two sets you will you will see that you will have basically 2 times 3 which is equal to 6 distinct distinct pairs of pairs of um, 16 pairs of distinct uh, colored objects or 16 pairs I would say for the sake of simplicity 16 uh, I'm sorry six distinct pairs which would be a red B which would be a red bag basically a red B, red comma B. You could have red comma C, which is a red coat. Red comma C. We could have a red comma, for example, and just to 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 not confuse ourselves, let me use lowercase letters here. So a red C, and then we could have a red, basically shared. R S, a red S. And we could have, we could also have a blue bag. We could have a blue bag. <coughs> we could have a, we could have a blue, a blue coat. And we could have a, we could have a blue, we could have a blue shirt. Right? So we have six distinct pairs we can make from these two sets. So of course you know that basically uh, an ordered pair, these are basically called ordered pairs. These are called ordered pairs and of course, you know that an ordered pair is uh, an ordered pair of elements taken from any two sets P and Q is a pair of elements written in small brackets and grouped together in a particular order. Um, that is basically, you can say that to understand what an ordered pair of elements is, basically you can say that an ordered pair an ordered pair of elements is taken from any two sets P and Q taken from any two sets P and Q is a pair of elements is a pair of elements written in written in small brackets in small brackets uh, and grouped together in a particular order and grouped together in a particular order that is that is the the, the ordered pairs of p comma q um, such that basically p belongs to the set p and q belongs to the set 
Q, right? Now, this basically leads us to this, to, to some, to, to a definition that I can call definition number one. That I can call definition number one. And that is basically given two non-empty sets P and Q. Given two non-empty sets P and Q. The Cartesian, uh, the Cartesian product P t times Q. The Cartesian product P times Q. Okay. Is the set of all ordered pairs. Is the set of all ordered pairs. of elements from P and Q of elements from P and Q that is that is the the, the Cartesian product P times Q is this is the same is the set of order of of is the set of all ordered pairs p comma q such that p belongs to the set p and q belongs to the set q right now of course you know that if either p or q is a null set then p times the cartesian product p times q will also be an empty set because because then it's just simply not possible to create those ordered pairs. So then basically based on this definition, we can say that we can say that in this particular case, um, we can write, we can write basically um, in this particular case, for example, in the case that we had over here, what we can say is that, what we can say is that, for example, let's say that A is equal to red and blue, and B is equal to B, C, and S, then the Cartesian product of the set A and B is the set containing all of these, all of these ordered pairs, for example, you can read, you can write red, you can write red comma, for example, B, you can write red comma C, red comma C, you can write red comma S, red comma S, you can write blue comma B, you can write blue comma B, you can write blue comma blue comma C and also you can write and also you can write let me write this over here you can write basically blue comma B and blue comma C blue comma C and then you have blue comma S blue comma S and that is called the set is called the Cartesian product of the sets A and B based on the definition that we said, that we stated. Or as another example, we could say that, for example, let's say that we have, we have two sets over here. We have the set A that is, for example, DL, uh, MP, and for example, KA. And we have, and, 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 and please note that DL, uh, denotes basically Delhi. That denotes Delhi. 
this denotes uh, basically Madhya Pradesh Madhya Pradesh and KA represents Karnataka so these are three states in India right and uh, and also we have some other some other set B we have some other set B which is which has basically all of these elements which has all of these elements for example 0 1 0 2 and 0 3 representing representing codes for the license plates of vehicles issued by these three states so these are 0 1 0 2 and 0 3 representing license codes license license plate codes right now um, if the three states Delhi Madhya Pradesh and Karnataka um, were making codes for the license plates of vehicles with the restriction that the code begins with an element from set A so the restriction now suppose that basically these three states want to make license codes for 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 vehicles and the restriction is and the restriction is that the code begins with that the codes that the code begins with uh, an element of an element of the of the set of the set A basically right that is the restriction so then based on that we could come up with a number of ordered pairs so um, the order pairs that we would come up with would be for example DL01, DL02, DL03 and then we have MP01, MP02, MP03, KA01, KA02 and KA03 and if I basically put all of those ordered pairs together in a set that would be basically the Cartesian product of the set A and B the Cartesian product of the set A and B would be basically, for example, DL comma zero one. You would have DL comma zero two. You would have DL comma zero three. You would have MP comma zero one. You would have MP comma zero two, and you would have MP comma. 0, 3 and then you would have ka comma 0 1 you would have ka for example comma 0 2 and then you would have ka comma 0 3 right and this set you could simply then call the cartesian product of the sets a and b this is the cartesian product of A and B right now now you can see that here basically there are nine ordered pairs uh, in the in the Cartesian product since there are three elements in each of those in each of those sets we have three elements here and we have three elements here three times three is equal to basically nine ordered pairs and also basically what is important here is that the order is important here so here basically 
uh, what is what is to be noted is that what is to be noted is that basically the order of the of the of the elements of the elements in the in the ordered pairs in the ordered pairs is important right that is important meaning that you cannot you cannot write this as 0 1 comma dl or you cannot write this as 0 2 comma dl because of this restriction that we had here and we said that the codes that the codes begin with an element of the set a so we have to start with an element of the set a and then after that we can choose an element of the set b so that's important so that is another example and uh, let's say that you have as another illustration let's say that you have two sets for example the set a is equal to for example the set a is equal to a1 comma a2 and the set b is equal to for example b1 b2 b3 and b4 b1 b2 b3 and b4 right now a the cartesian product of a and b would be a set containing all of these ordered pairs and the way that you can that you can make this easier not to make mistakes is that you can write all of these elements in in like a table table like form meaning that you can write this as for example a1 and a2 and then you can write these elements as b1 b2 b1 b2 b3 and b4 and uh, actually you need to write them more like this meaning that you can write basically something like this so something like this so this is basically b1 b2 b3 and b4 and something like this and then if you add all of these together some something like this you would have basically you would have basically something like this meaning that you would have for example a1 and a2 over here and then you would have b1 and b2 and b3 and and b4 over here and that would be i don't really know what to call this but but you can use this this pattern in order to 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 create your your order pairs meaning that you could start with a1 and then use all of these and then you could start with you could start with a2 and again use the same things here the same basically elements here and then you would come up with for example a1 b1 a1 b2 a1 b3 a1 b4 a2 b1 a2 b2 a2 b3 and a2 b4 so then you would end up with a1 comma b1 and a1 comma b2 and a1 comma b3 and a1 comma comma b4 and then you would have a2 comma b1 a2 comma b1 you would have a2 comma b2 you would have a2 comma b3 and you would have a2 comma b4 and that's supposed to be a parenthesis and i erase this And I erase this here, so this is B4. And so if I put a uh, basically 
basic D. If I write this as A2, B4, and represent this as a set as A, the Cartesian product of A and B. So, so again, you can see that I have basic D N of A is equal to 2, meaning that the number of elements of A is equal to, is, is, is 2, and the number of elements of B is 4, so 4 times 2 is equal to 8, which is, which is, which is because, which is N of A times N of B is equal to N of a times b which is equal to 8 that's that's the first point um, so these ordered pairs basically that that we have formed this way can represent the position of points in the plane if uh, a and b are subsets of the sets of of the set of real numbers for example and it's obvious that the points in the position, for example, a1, b1, uh, or a1, b2, for example, this, this, oh, excuse me. It's, it's obvious that the point in this position, if this was, if this point was to be used in order to represent a point in the, in the plane, in the 2D plane, for example. So suppose that basically, um, if A and B are basically subsets, if these two sets basically were subsets of the set of real numbers, then these ordered pairs could be used in order to represent some points in this plane, right? And what that means is that then basically, for example, A1 comma B2 is not the same thing as, 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 for example, A2 comma B1 or, or any other point for that matter. So all of these things, all of these points would then be distinct, right? And, but of course we will basically we about the fact that basically A and B could be subsets of the set of real numbers and then these ordered, each of these ordered pairs could be used in order to represent a point in the, in the 2D plane. That is the, that is actually the, the, the main point that we, I mean, one of the main points that we want to discuss in this course, once we get past this, this review, then we will get a little bit deeper into basically that aspect of the things. We get into functions and then how basically a function is actually a, a, a progression of the, of the concept of the Cartesian product of the two sets, meaning that you have First of all, you have two sets. You create the Cartesian product of the sets. After that, that, that Cartesian product is you, from that Cartesian product of the two sets, which is a set that you can see over here. From that, you can create a relation between, uh, between, uh, basically from A to B and then that relation can be can be used in order to create a function from a to b and then that function is basically for example something like uh for something like y is equal to x squared which is going to be for example some some curve line in the plane and you know that this curve line is actually nothing but a collection of such points in the plane meaning that you have all of these points in the plane of course in the if for example the the basically the so these points you can think of these points as, as, as these ordered pairs that we have here and of course since we have since if, if we assume that the horizontal axis and the vertical axis are which is in this case basically the sets a and b if these are subsets of the set of real numbers, then what that means is that then you have an, an, an infinite number of such points in the plane relative to this situation, which is simply the Cartesian product of two sets. But we will get basically uh, more deeply into this concept as we get into the, into the next videos of this course.
now uh but before we get there let's 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 take there is a couple of remarks that we need to understand so as a as a couple of remarks we can say that as a couple of remarks we can say that two order pairs are equal Okay, so as remark number one, as remark number one, I can say that two ordered pairs, two ordered pairs are equal, are equal, if and only if if and only if the corresponding first elements are equal the corresponding first elements are equal and second elements are also equal And second elements are also equal. So in order to understand this uh, statement, first of all, the statement is a biconditional, meaning that you have if and only if here. Sometimes if and only if is written as IFF, if and only if. And if you think about this as basically two, two statements or two, basically this is called a, this whole statement is called a compound statement because it's, because it has two component statements. So this is a component statement, it's called it P. And this, this is statement over here, I will call it Q, for example. This is statement over here, call it Q. And this is statement can then be written as P if and only if Q. That means that, that means that basically what, what this means is that P implies Q and also Q implies P. Which means that which means that you can say that two ordered pairs are equal if not, 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 not basically. So this is basically simple if I F. But this, 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 this over here is a, is a double head arrow. This is a single head arrow, right? So the single head arrow is basically simple if, but the double head arrow is, is I double F. This is a bicondition, this is a condition. So when you have a bicondition, you can break it down into two conditions, meaning that P implies Q and Q implies P, put them together, that becomes P if and only if Q, meaning that P implies Q and Q implies P. So what this means is that if P is true, then Q is true. When you say P implies Q, the same thing you can write it as p implies q this thing over here you can write it as p implies q and this over here you can write it as q implies implies p right so when when you say p implies q that means that when p is true then q must necessarily be true when you say q implies p that what that means is that when Q is true, then P must necessarily be true. Meaning that two or, and, and the meaning of this statement here is basically, if, basically, if two, st two ordered pairs of pairs are equal, then basically, um, then, uh, the corresponding first elements are equal, and the second elements are also equal, right? So the same statement here that I have written as P implies Q, I can write it as if P 
I can write it as if P then Q. Meaning that if this is true, then this is also true. If P is true, then Q is also true. So what that means is that then basically in this particular case, I can say that if two ordered pairs are equal, then the corresponding first elements are equal and the second elements are also equal. And also I can say that if the, the corresponding first elements in, a, in an ordered pair are equal and the second elements are also equal, then the, the ordered pairs are equal. That's called a, that this thing over here is called a biconditional. A biconditional, right? So, so that's basically the first statement here. Now, the second remark that we have here is The second remark that we have here is uh, is basically if there are p elements in A, number two, if there are p elements in A and q elements in q elements in B then there will be p times q elements in a in the cartesian product of a and b then there will be there will be p times q uh, p times q elements elements in p time the cartesian product of of a and b and as you can see, this is again the same the same type of statement. I have a I have a p over here. I, I'm sorry. I have an if over here. I have a then over here. I have some statement over here. Call it p for example. I have another statement over here for example. Call it q, right? And so you can say that, for example, this statement P is some statement here, which is basically this statement all the way up to here, starting from here all the way up to here. And there is, there is another statement Q, which starts from here all the way up to here. And so you have another statement. And this situation is P implies Q. Or if P, then Q. which you can see the if over here and you can see the n the, the then over here which means that you can you can restate the same statement as there are p elements in a and q elements in b implies there will be p times q elements in the cartesian product of a and b right which means that if p is true meaning that if there are p elements in q and q elements yeah, if there are p elements in A and q elements in B, if that is the case or if that is true, then there must necessarily be p times q elements in A times B, meaning that, meaning that then q cannot be false. q has to be true as well, so that p implies q is true. In order for p, in order, I'm sorry, in order for, for p implies q, in order for this statement to be true, then if P is true, then Q has to be true as well, right? And the truth table for for this for this kind of condition, which is called an implication, is basically if you have some statement here P and some some statement here Q, then P implies Q is going to be true in three cases and only false in one case. Now, and, and if you want to basically understand why that is the case, you can think of the, you can think of the, the, 
the 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 situation of the politician of the politician so the politician promises that if i get elected i get elected for example president then the taxes will decrease if i get elected president then the taxes will decrease right so now i take this as i take this is my if this is my then and i have some statement here call it p i have some statement over here call it q now that the politician is 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 promising that if i get elected president then the taxes will will decrease right that's what he's promising now what this means for this statement p then q this whole statement this whole compound statement to be true is if the politician keeps his promise right so suppose that the politician gets gets elected as president which means that p is true so then and suppose that the taxes will also decrease meaning that q is also true then of course he has kept his promise and then p implies q is true now suppose that p is false meaning that the politician doesn't get elected as the president now there are two cases here either q is true or q is also false now this case over here suppose that the politician doesn't get elected as the president and the taxes will actually go down or will decrease so then the statement is true because then it doesn't have anything to do with the politician anymore the politician didn't get elected as the president in the first place so the, the so the fact that whether the fact that whether the taxes will decrease or not is not really important anymore the politician didn't get elected in the first place so so then if q is true then the then the uh, then p p p implies q is true and again the politician didn't get elected as president so whether or not the taxes will actually decrease or not meaning that whether or not q is true or false or whether 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 basically q is true or false is actually doesn't really matter in any case the statement is going to be true meaning that the politician didn't get elected as the president and the and the taxes didn't go down that's that's not a problem the politician didn't get elected as the president so in all of these three cases the p implies q is true now suppose that suppose that basically um, the p is true and meaning that the politician gets elected as president and the taxes will not go down meaning that q is false in that case what happens is that the politician has not kept his promise which means that this statement is false so only in this case can you say that p implies q is false otherwise in all of the other cases you can you can say that the you can say that p implies q is true so now if you pay attention to this particular case here well we are we basically we don't have any reason to assume that p is false right because uh, because otherwise we wouldn't make really we, we wouldn't really make that 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 that, that statement if a component statement is false we wouldn't really make that statement but the but the truth table is basically like this now if you pay attention to this particular to this particular situation true 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 what we are saying is that if p is true and of course i'm assuming that p implies q is supposed to be true i don't want to make a false statement assuming that i'm making a true statement 
then if p is true then q necessarily has to be true right that's basically why i'm saying if p is true q has to be true because i'm assuming that p implies q is true right so then i have the same statement here the same situation i'm saying here that if there are p elements in in a and q elements in b if this is true then this has ne this necessarily has to be true meaning that then there will be necessarily p times q elements in a times b in or a in the cartesian product of a and b so that is basically um that is basically statement number two and statement number three is uh, statement number three is uh, if a and b are non-empty sets if a and b are non-empty sets and either a or b is an infinite set and either a or b is an infinite set is an infinite set meaning that you don't know the number of elements of a or b uh, then so is then so is basically the cartesian product of a and b meaning that then this set is also going to be an infinite set and again you can see it that over here you have if and then and you have this statement over here and you have this statement over here you can call it p and this would be also a part of p and this would be q this is your if and this is your then so these are all called implications meaning that p implies q all right and you need to understand these in in the mathematical sense all of these statements are supposed to be understood in mathematical sense and not in the sense that that they might be used in the english language in the english language uh, the english language does actually is 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 kind of the same thing but it's it's only one of those cases um, uh, basically the three more the two or three more cases that that you saw over here in this table are actually usually not actually understood by 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 people in 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 our day-to-day -day lives people would not would not usually usually agree with agree with this type of statement that for example if i don't get elected as president and the taxes will go down then the statement is true they, they they wouldn't they wouldn't probably agree with this or they or they wouldn't they wouldn't really um they wouldn't really agree with the fact that if i don't get get elected president and and the taxes will not go and uh, if i don't get elected as president then the taxes will not go down right so that sort of statement we do we do actually make that sort of statement that that actually does make sense in some in some makes make some sense in the english language but uh, but then again you need to understand these statements in the mathematical sense and not necessarily uh, not necessarily in the in the in the uh, in the way that it, they are usually used in the english language and uh, statement number four we have a times a times a or the cartesian product of these three sets a and a and a is basically defined as these triplets uh, triplets of a b and c such that a b and c belong to the set a and here basically a b that this 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 basically whatever you see over here is called an order triplet 
and order triplet okay now now we have a couple of examples here we will go through uh, we will go through a couple of these examples as well if that's necessary but that we will do that we would do in the in the next video i'll see you in the next video and thank you